baseline. Oh. Got the rebound. Oh. Stays with it. Nothing doing there. A scrum breaks out. Ryan Sidney got it in. Couldn't get the shot. Boy, they're just rocking and rolling down there. I think they pointed the wrong way. Like Sandy had the ball and had to be a little bit tougher with it. And mixing it up, and this is where it's won. Anything loose, anything on the rim. And now they got another nickel dimer. Looks like they got Wiggins, Wiggin, huh? Yeah. Well, freshman guard on the Fox New York. Three team fouls for Rutgers, two for Boston College. Down low, Sydney posting, jump ball, score the goal. Too tough, and that's too easy. Pass, step in bounds into the low post area. He knows how to play around the rim. That's what makes Ryan Sydney, I think, a tough matchup. He steps right in here, and then the post up, and defensively, not attentive. He didn't short arm that one there. That's a nice, soft, a little feathery release here with the jump hook. And I think that's what makes him so tough, because he can face, shoot it, put it on the floor, and then do damage around the rim. Well, after missing his first four from the field, gets a three-point play, and Ryan's a notoriously bad free throw shooter at 50%, so you know he's got to be into it now, trailing nine to six. You mentioned that Turkey's coming. He came with good numbers. 10 points, dead. 13 rebounds, six assists, turnover. Steal by Agby, Sydney. Full energy now, blocked by Kitt, but a foul before. I think underneath was the foul. A little right out by Sherrard. Yeah, that'll be his second. So Gary Waters back is in trouble here. But they've turnovers that lead to fast breaks. I mean, they are really set up your offense, and uh, Rutgers uh, unable to control it on the last trip. Starting backcourt of Coleman and Sherrod. Pick up uh, there. Two fouls within about 34 seconds of each other. Championship week presented by 7-Up against coverage of the ACC tournament tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. First round game between Clemson and Florida State from Charlotte, North Carolina. What do you like in that tournament? Well, you know, Merrill is playing so well. I mean, that's ultimately that's going to be the number one seed, the winner of uh, the tournament. I guess people would say Merrill and Duke certainly are the favorites. How about you? No question. You got to go with those two. Be curious to see what kind of damage uh, Skip Price and Wake can do. Mm -hmm. They got some experience. Talking to Tyson Paul and Hewitt, he thinks he might be able to get something done. Want a game or two for Georgia Tech? Well, every coach does, and why not? But how about that little stick? Yields. Boy, those are kind of fearless shooters. 11 to 8. Well, he knows about his numbers. He's one of those shooters. How do I get out of the slope? Well, that's, rip. That's, a, that's a nice sign for Rutgers. If he's able to do number. Agby down in the box area gets knocked. They get Kent. Oh, the foul. That'll be his first. Almost Team seven sixth minutes. already. Excuse me, almost seven, Dave. Does that yeah. surprise you with his first foul? <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> I tell you what, we'll check with Johnny Beiser from uh, the Rutgers SID office. That's got to be a personal mark. It, it may be, and that's just not a good personal pass there. Uh, Lock low, you got to get a better angle. The guy's back on his heels. And an empty trip for Al Skinner. Rutgers with a three point lead. Boy, there's some contact there. My goodness. Steps, steps before. And you may have been right. Maybe uh, Bell got a little assist there. Mm -hmm. A little physical on the cut. But that's Big East basketball. Sure is. He came hard off the cut. He was met hard, too. Now Bell not afraid. A little ding-dong, huh? A little giveaway. And a break for BC. Got some Rutgers fans in attendance. That old University program very excited about what's going on with Bell running along the baseline. Jason McCoy is in the game number 21 for the Scarlet Knights. A foul on Wigan. That'll be his second. Now, Bell, when he plays his game, has great control of the dribble, uses screens well, and he's got that elusive first step. All of a sudden, he lulls you into thinking he's not quick and blows by. And there, a little adjustment with the guard. So how about this, Bill? The three guards that they rely so much on, Coleman, Sherrod, and Wigan, all have two fouls right now. Well, that's, that's a major concern, I would think. Changes the way you want to play. Troy Bell, a terrific free throw shooter at 89%, number one on the team. The second free throw shooting in the conference to Villanova's Gary Buchanan. One interesting note, passed along by assistant coach Ed Cooley, that 
Bell's big games this year. He had a 42 against Iowa State, a 34 against UMass. Will come with his uh, mom and dad, Fred and Maggie, in attendance, and they're here today. <laughs> they go, and, and he was saying, "Hey, maybe that's a good sign that we're gonna keep this thing going." That was a demand. The other guys said, "You can really get your folks here." There's some pressure by BC. They gotta hit the post guy. You know, and he stepped on the sideline. Another turnover for Rutgers. That's their fifth. You know, in a neutral site, though, and Rutgers is a great pressing team at home. We've mentioned how good they are there, and it was one of the guidelines set by uh, Gary. He wanted to be as tough as you can be. But in a neutral atmosphere, you can't get the fervor. You bet. You can't get the excitement. And Pep Band just doesn't have the same impact on the road. Folks, if you haven't had a chance to see a game at Rutgers, they get that place packed, the noise goes up, hits that tin roof, and it bounces down and just wraps all around. Foul off the ball, and it's going to be against Boston College. I think it's Ryan Sidney on the cut. Now, they run. BC still runs the flex at times. By that, the baseline screen. And don't forget, uh, Tom Davis ran it there. Gary Williams ran it there. And Al Skinner, on some of the sets, likes to run it. That's where they get Sidney to the box. Perfect trap. Oh, sure was, and no, they get Kenny Walls. A better Walls than Bell, I think. And yeah. It, no, they give it to Bell. They do give it to Bell. And he was the guy. So Troy Bell, that'll be his first. See, Ted Valentine's eyes are too good. <laughs> you know, you got to... The lesser of evils, Theodore. Sherrod is back in the game. Here's Kent posting up. Now, that's what I would do. Trap him and make it a tough look. McCoy back to Sherrod and Zanny. Tee it up from there, a little strong. And a rebound. Brian had a chance, but Sherrod gets it. Nice Down pass. low. Zanny lost it. First game jitters, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Up top, Bell. That's a, that was a great explosion. Troy Bell right down the lane. It's almost like a starter's block. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That foot back in. Boom! A little blow by. First field goal for Bell. It's like the Milrose games, huh? That's a 60 yard dash. He saw that opening, seized the opportunity. Shields in the corner. So a real good matchup with Agby and Kent going pound for pound. The last few trips, they've been in this little zone. Shields is hitting. Look. How about that? How about him? Shields, two for 22. The last four games from three-point range, 14-12 records. So he's got his first three of the afternoon. Coming to New York, sort of relaxed him a little bit. Some guys go the other way. Yeah. Shields out of up in Marlboro, Maryland. Here's Kenny Walls, barely gets some iron. Bell runs it down in the corner. Walls pretty back to Eggby, who got hammered from behind. Well, McCoy in the back there trying to slide down. He, they jumped into that zone the last trip as well. And great penetration, something that years ago you didn't do this, Dave. You were not permitted to enter that domain. Right. Get in the gap with that bounce now. Really creates havoc for the defense to give away from the rear by McCoy. McCoy's foul, his first 18 foul. You get back by right here in New York City. Darch Bishop Malloy. One of the great guys and coaches, huh? Huh? Indeed. Harold Curry. Uh, basketball coach, baseball coach, Irve Lamazina. Jack just won his 800th game, by the yeah. way, in basketball. I think he's been over 1,000 in baseball for a while. Wow, sure. Lamazon is a guy that can change a game around. Black and shot, shoot a three. Agli with Play with it, bro. 10.35 to go. Tied at 14. First game of the Conagra Big East. Championship as we look at Times Square. Hungry? You've come to the right place. Big East Championship. Bell and Sydney. Terrific backcourt. Here's what happens in the wins. Usually some pretty good performance. Boy, when they fall off, it makes it a little bit difficult. Bell 0 for 3 and uh, Sydney 1 for 5 right now. Let's get, with, get some more with Dave Ryan. Well, David, talking with the BC coaches, three E's are their three keys for this game. Energy, enthusiasm, and execution. They were concerned about a poor start today against the Knights, especially offensively, since, as Bill mentioned, Rutgers' defense is so active. The energy usually comes from guys like Troy Bell and Ryan Sidney. Sidney's really picked it up midway through this first half, as has Bell. Good play, too, from Kenny Walls at last drive and a pass to Agby. That's the kind of thing that BC coaches want. A lot of energy out there that helps pick up their game in the positive direction. Rhino, thank you, Bell, with four points. Sydney with five. 14 all game. Rutgers had a 6-0 lead to start this game. 
Shields feeds it down in the post. Ramazana couldn't make the catch, but he does recover. But a traveling violation. How about Teddy out of half court? And all the traffic. I'm telling you, his eyes. It's all over today. You can't get away with anything. Seventh turnover for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Ramazan, I think, was a little bit shocked he got that pass. Yeah. He'll be ready. A little two, three look. Boston College, its last nine games, has gone four and five. You mentioned they come off a nice win at Syracuse on Sunday. Down low to Agba. Getting Agba really plays so much bigger and so much more involved. Deflection. Bell thinks he got fouled. Glad you could join us this afternoon from New York City. Championship week presented by 7-Up, bringing you the ConAgra Foods Big East Championship. I'm Dave Sims with Bill Raftery and Dave Ryan. 14 all the scores. We go under 10 minutes, first half. BC got up to a terrible shooting start. They had four turnovers before they got their first field goal attempt. Two seconds on a shot clock. Ball deals an air ball. They got the violation. And, and there you can see late penetration and now a little bit frustrated. Trying to find a rhythm. And, and you know, right now, psychologically, disadvantage to BC. A mm -hmm. little personal pressure. They know they got to get a little roll going if they're going to make the NCAA. BC, the defending tournament champions, shooting three for 14. Their ninth in the conference. And shooting and Sydney wins another scrum anything up for grabs usually kicks Bell quick release on the hook shot and Ramazana rebounds for Rutgers back the other way get shots guys and that's where Rutgers struggles once in a while Shields got down low and Agby sent it back got a two on two Sydney with Walls coming put it up on the right hand no but Agby good hustle and the big fella Nice job getting down the floor, and right away, Gary Waters not happy. But you got to match bigs when they go up and down the floor, or you're going to end up at the short end. And that was a uh, point of Gary Waters' concern. Who did he address immediately? The big people. No question. you got to make sure you get down. But you think you got an easy one, and it's wonderful when you get an opportunity defensively right at the foul line. The push, and a nice throw by Sydney with the give up, but cleaning it up. Bag by and this guy plays everybody in this league top I think six six I'd give him very much improved player too they got six eight I give him six six yeah I hear you <laughs> take a look at our brackets here for the ConAgra Foods Big East Championships following uh, this game we've got Providence and Georgetown followed by Villanova and Syracuse to start the evening double dip Mike Tirico and Len Elmore will have that Seton Hall against St. John's is the finale Pittsburgh, Miami, Connecticut, Notre Dame, hanging out, just watching the early first-round action. I'm sure Mike Tirico was dancing in the streets last night, having these night games, you know? <laughs> Gotta learn to take care of yourself. BC on a 13-5 run the last 450 and change. Here's Sherrod, and it's a three. Check that, Teddy Valentine says it's a deuce. So Mike Sherrod, 37 percent, ties the score at 16. He just loves the threes, Dave. He does. He hit one a big one Sunday at Syracuse. Rebound, Kent. That's rolling over, huh? That's right. Five against the Cats. And Jay Wright, I'm sure, never expected that many. I know. Seeing Andrew at, at shooter around to figure, hey, look at him. Oh, big guy's going to be down a low box. You see him shooting? Hey. Beyond the circles, big fella. Most of the big guys now start by shooting outside until a coach says, son, get your little backside there on that block area. And Sherrod with the penetration draws the foul. Drew Coleman and Joel Wiggett have returned for Rutgers. And uh, Watson is in the game right now, Jermaine Watson. There's your shooting numbers. Rutgers shooting much better at 50%. Rutgers 13th in field goal shooting. Just ahead of Seton Hall in the conference. Ramazana way too strong. Can't clean it up. Well, he does get a great shape. Carves out Airy with the big body. Shot Kent with four points. There's zone action here for Rutgers. And the last few trips, they've been in the 2-3. Nice. Great. And it's interesting the way Gary Wood is rotating the guys with the two fouls. Gives him a couple of minutes being slides somebody else in combination. Sherrod and Coleman that last trip. Shields with the foul. That'll be his first. Go, right there. Go, get out of here. Team foul number nine. Andrew Bryant. 
and a season high 15 points against Villanova back on February 23rd. One of those guys that makes threes within the center offense and also in the early offense. Right. So the, the guards pushing all of a sudden. And the big fella looming on the line. Six seven sophomore out of Denison, Texas. We saw Eugene Dabney come in the game number five for Rutgers. Bryant has BC to within one. 45 to go first half. Nice post up the wrong hand. Too long a pass by Coleman. See if BC can convert here. You see one for the last eight from the field. Sydney with Bell and Watson in the backcourt. Brian and Ag by up front. Sydney for three. Got it. And they set up. You got to get out on him. Lozano just laid back. First lead for Boston College. Coleman doesn't get it back. With a short, he got fouled. Right out there for three game sims. Wow. It's amazing how hard the coaches in their lines close out. And once the game starts, they just run right through it. They don't skip to the stop. The closeout here, you got to skip or jump stop and not permit the follow through. I mean, your body weight's going forward. You must do that or you're going to nail the shooter. First one's good by Coleman, who's at 70%. And Dave, you know whose teams were great at closing out and not fouling? The Tart at Vegas. Yeah. They, they would get out on the shooter and be in position to challenge him without the follow through. The Rutgers, two out of four at the line. Boston College, eight out of nine. Chad Kent, been a, a lot of fun watching him develop over the course of his four-year career. Take a break, 7.08 to go. Doug Boats getting their work done, going under the Brooklyn Bridge here in New York City. Rutgers by one. And how important is this game for Boston College? My goodness. 43 is their RPI bill. Yeah. And generally in the Big East Conference, you get 20 wins. It's pretty much a gimme getting to the tournament. That seems to have been over the years. Of course, you never know when you give a committee a chance to make the decision. That's why playing well and getting the wins in this tournament becomes so essential for a team like Boston College. Pitt, you've got Miami. Of course, we're just assuming, and I think correctly so, that they are gimmies. They are in the tournament. You mentioned Watson on the floor. He really pushes it. He attacks. He's got that mentality. And he'll take it all the way for BC here on the wing. Senior Brian Ross is in the game for BC, number 45. Eagles trailing by a point. We're under seven minutes to go. Now the zone has slowed them down. Bell forced to take the deep jack. Kick with the rebound. That's his fourth. He's on his fourth in defensive rebounds this season. Well, Wigan guarded by Bell. I think they ought to go through Kent somehow just to get him involved. Maybe puts it there. They go strong. And he gets hammered by Ryan Sidney. Came over from the weak side. You know, going to commercial, you mentioned he Kent and what he's done with his career. It's been so impressive. The svelte look now. I mean, the ability to go long distances for rebounds, the aggressive holdoffs, and, of course, the giveaways. It's the mini shack attack. Guys put him on the free throw line because he just struggles. Gets a little bit of a rash here. One of their all-time steal leaders, too, comes in with 54 steals, 54 block shots. Free throw shooting, that's a whole nother dimension. 39% this year, 0 for 3 today. Ryan Sidney's going to get a blow. Kenny Walls is back. Very personable young man from downstate West Virginia, Fairmount, West Virginia. Had a big game against the Mountaineers at the rack earlier this year. Ran by Gail Catlett, hey, coach, you should have recruited me. <laughs> he did enjoy it. I, I think I mentioned to you, did you have a game when the mother and grandmother were? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Was that historical? That was a lot of fun. How enthusiastic they were. Here's Bell over the top. Three won't go. Run down by Joel Wiggin. Rutgers with the ball up two. As you mentioned, Bill, during a break, good crowd here. First game of the tournament. Coleman up top. Nice double screen. Coleman. Nice reverse. Heck of a finish, huh? Traffic. Put it in with the, the close in right hand. He's got 10 points. 
team high. Four point lead. Like we started off with a six nothing lead. Brian Ross, you know, they hit a few threes every now and then. Rebounds, kept alive, Bell's got it. He can shoot it, you're right, Ross. Just plugs out there, too. Always in the right spot on the offensive glass. There's Bell on the other side. Kenny Walls off the screen from Ross. Front wind it. Wigan got Coleman on his right. And look at the begging over there. He's set, fires, doesn't get it. Boy, he had his head turned and looking at, uh, at Wigan the entire time. I'm open, I'm open, and he hadn't even crossed midcourt. Uh, look, the mayor said no begging on the streets of New York. <laughs> Jerome Coleman giving a uh, new meaning, but here's a nice double screen, and watch the clear out here, and a good op going left by Coleman. Excellent read, and the ability to finish so important, coming right into the living room. More than, dependent on your choice, and kiss. Kent at the line on the second foul by Troy Bell. Good rotation on that little wide left. Watson with the rebound. I love Rashad, but I think I said this to you the last game. He's not shooting pick sides for me. I post your imagination. You can have him. <laughs> Hang by. Weak side. Gets it to Bell. Under five to play here in the first half. Kenny Walls to three. No, sir. Egg by rebound. Good kick. Kenny Walls with the right hand. Close the layup. Ah, Watson denied. Sent back by Ramazana. Got a battle. And Joel Wigan comes away. This is where you need patience. Don't do anything silly to get the small change out of there. there. Hand check. Watson. Coleman was going down the line. All right, here, the good strong. I think just exposed it too early, Dave. Once you give that hand out there, you can't control the finish. And Lamazano, who can really elevate around the rim, jars him just a bit. 56 black for Irve. Top on the ball club. Coleman, pretty good free throw shooter at 70%. The only real recruit signed by Waters. It was so late in the recruiting season after Gary gets signed. What a terrific find. Almost 17 points a game. 38 percent shooting, 35 from deep. And the Shields is going to come back in. And Coleman's going to leave. Coleman has 12 points. By the way, Dave, I think uh, I'm going to talk to Gary Waters about getting some of his old clothes. <laughs> he does rather well. He does step up. Natty. Fashion Power Index. He was number one back in early January. Loser Flint won that title last year. Now, Bruiser won Coach of the Year title this year, too. There's Wiggins going up. Nice extension. Got the layup. Biggest lead of the afternoon for Rutgers. 28 20. Uh, Gary Waters went to the zone. They got PC to slow down. It protected some of his foul problems, and they got a steal out of it that last trip. An interesting story developing here at the guy. Defending champions right now. Truly fell for three. Oh. And an out rebound shield. Settling. And the zone has forced him to settle deep. Bell struggling mightily at one for nine for the field. See if they get something here. Wigan takes it right in. And he got fouled. Boy. All of a sudden, he couldn't believe it. There was nobody home, and he attacked. He was right there. How about Eugene Dabney with a heck of a pick standing still? But this is the hands and the activity on the defensive end. They trap in the corner. They get the diagonal coming. Just excellent analysis on the defensive end. This 2-3 has been their salvation. Wigan rattles one out. He's shooting 69%. Had a good career up at Notre Dame Academy at Pittsburgh, Mass. As Kent will get a ball. Wigan with two points, four rebounds, coming off the bench in that backcourt, which has been a foul trouble from the early going. Coleman picked up a second foul at the 14-minute mark. Sherrod at the 13:36 mark. And we'll take a break. 3:43, a nine-point Rutgers lead. Rutgers on an 11-0 run. DC struggling, missing its last nine. ESPN 2. Well, I think I might go to 2. <laughs> ESPN 2, that is. Now Skinner's club in some trouble right now. Rutgers fans making themselves 
Heard here up by nine. The zone has done a real good job. A two-three zone. And Dave, I'm sure in that timeout they've got to put people in different spots. You gotta change the deployment. And either they got Sydney at the foul line, something different. Sydney turns. Stolen by Lamazana. Well, you've got to be careful. I mean, that zone closes quickly. Good idea, but you don't commit if they react. Ten turnovers by Boston College. Right now, Wiggin and Shields in the backcourt with Lamazana, Exani, and Dabney up front. Bryant got his hands on it. Now Sydney gets another loose ball. Where are you going with the dribble? Back to Bell, deep three. Won't go. He's able to track it down, but saves it to Wiggin. Wiggin with a two on two. Waits for help. Shields in the paint. Got it off and in. Great patience. Joe Wiggin bounces right back after a mistake to make a real clever play. How about this? An 11 point Rutgers lead. Seven for Ricky Shields. Rutgers, the fifth seed in the East. Sydney. Good counter. Well, lost it going up because he got fouled by Wiggin. And for Wigan, that's his third. That really hurts the Rutgers cause. 11 point lead for Rutgers right now. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, the New York City police and firemen are involved in the Big East tournament as honorary captains on the BC side. Dwayne Flowers, a narcotics investigator from the Bronx. He tells me he's excited because he played high school ball for two years here in New York City. A little more experience, though, on the Rutgers sideline. Firefighter Kenneth Escoffery from Ladder 20. That's on Lafayette Street, guys, the lower west side, along with Squad 18. The two companies lost 14 firefighters on September 11th. Now, Scoffrey was a forward at Taft High here in New York City. Played high school ball, was very good, and played at Minot State in North Dakota, where he averaged 16 points and eight rebounds a game. So he's got a little experience, maybe something he can add there to Gary Waters and the Knights' cause later on. Dave, good point. And this is an, uh, Dale Brown from Minot. I was just going to say, yeah. LSU's own. Uh, what a great gesture, I think to have those brave people on the sidelines representing the, to us their courage and efforts on everybody's behalf. Just phenomenal. Cannot say enough good things about BC 10 of 11 at the free throw line. Instead of keeping them uh, within contact, the Rutgers here, 31-22. 2.15 to go here in the first half. Dabney down low. Wheels on Agba. I got the shot off. Tip McZanny. No, stays with it. Zanny got the loose ball. He follows up and scores. Good hustle. Ends up with a good inside shot. And then the cleanup. Sean McZanny with four points. Rutgers getting some business done offensively with Kent on the bench, right? And I think Kent resting him. Uh, he can't get him in any problems. Uh, the zone has just been a dilemma. Uh, BC not able to counter. And they're able to rest uh, Coleman, too, who's got two fouls. Here's Wall, possibly Black and Amazon. they got a breakout. Big guy reacts, doesn't he? Sure does. Irving Lamazon has got two blocked shots already coming in off the bench. BC missed its last 10 from the field. He's one of those guys that influences, averages just a little under two a game in the rejection category. Rutgers up by 11. First appearance in the Big East tournament in two years. Turn out against the zone. Amazon has got some long range here. He's going to take it inside on the glass. Contact, offensive foul. Agby stood in, took the charge. And that'll be Irving's first foul. You knew it was coming. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, you got to know as a player. Irving. Slove. Por favor. The, the old intermediate jump shot was yeah, right there. Pull up, a little kiss shot there, an eight footer. But sometimes guys just want a, a little macho attack in it. They all count. Yep. 70 seconds to go here in the first half. Championship week. Presented by 7 Up begins coverage of the Big Ten tournament tomorrow. 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. It's going to be Iowa taking on Purdue. Then at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN, it will be Northwestern versus Michigan. It's coming to you from the Indianapolis and the Consuco Fieldhouse. There's a look at the brackets. Dave Sims and Bill Raftery with you. What a start here by Rutgers. Hey, they're playing pretty much with house money this year. And, and uh, Boston College defending champions on the ropes right now. It's almost like a tightness. Do you feel that oh, with PC? Definitely. I mean, that... Yeah. Not coping with the zone, and then Rutgers getting turnovers, block shots, runouts, uh, as you noted, resting the foul problems, and also a guy like Rashad Kent getting ample time on the pines. Numbers dreadful for Boston College. 17%, 5 out of 30. Goodness gracious. And here comes Rashad Kent. Kent on the uh, afternoon. He's got five points. 
He's going to be coming in at the next opportunity. Identifying the shooters and then they're responding to plays like this. Agby goes right inside, taken away. And let's see, what do we got? Will Bush looking for a help from Teddy Valentine. He'll stay right here. Well, Agby attracted a lot of people, almost like the rush hour subway. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> jumping right up on him. Good non-call by the officials as well. They respond. Anything on the box. DC got to get something going. Here's Bell. That's going to be wide and short. The rebound taken down by Kent. Boston College, its last nine games is four and five, right? Yeah, it, it, they're struggling on the offensive end, but right now, they, I think Kent has got to get a touch if you got him on the floor. Bell, one for ten. Bell and Wolves. Both shooting one for ten from the field. And Troy Bell really just catching, blocking, and loading. Nice denial. Sure was. Bell with the steal as they tried to feed Lamazana. So the shot clock is off, and BC's going to hold for one. Trailing 33-22. Almost like a man here as they're trying to get organized. Identify shooters. Walls for one. Sydney. Eight. Seven, six seconds. Walls penetrates. Dish find Bryant. Hierarchy three. No, two, no. That'll do it. Woo. Solid in red. How about the Rutgers Scarlet Knights? 15-2 run the last seven minutes. And coming up on the Seven Up halftime report, be John Saunders, Sigger Phelps, and Dick Vitale. They're going to bring you a preview of the Providence and Georgetown game and the Atlantic Ten is underway everybody it's 33 22 and let's get to our seven up halftime report here's john and the fellas all right, Dave, thanks a lot. And when you look at a 15-5 run to end this half, Rutgers is a team that has played well enough to perhaps find their way into the tournament. Boston College has been the disappointment of the season. Rutgers had a lot of confidence playing at home, winning some big games. Now they're on a neutral site, the Garden, and they're doing it again. They went to the zone the last 10 minutes of half. BC's had trouble scoring against it. But, Dick, do you really think, Dick, bobblehead, bubble? And do you really think that Rutgers can get in the tournament? Well, I'll tell you this. Rutgers got to go on a real roll. There's no doubt about it. They got to really make sure to at least get to the finals of the Big East tournament. If that happens, there's a possibility of a chance. I mean, are you kidding me? Hey, March Madness, it's going to be awesome, baby. Hey, what do you think, Bobble? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought one of him was enough. Now we have two. Get a T.O., baby. Move. When we come back, we will take a look at the rest of the Big East tournament. The bobblehead, the bubblehead, and more in a moment. <laughs> ESPN's presentation of the ConAgro Big East tournament is brought to you by the all-new BMW 7 Series. A new perspective on driving. And by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes, only 99 cents. And very, very half is coming up. Rutgers against Boston College. Rashad Kent has been strong on the glass. How about that 11 point lead for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers over the BC Eagles here at halftime? Dave Sims and Bill Raftery with you. And for weeks we've been saying all kinds of crazy things could happen in the tournament. And we've already seen that in the first 20 minutes. And, and that 2 3 zone. Uh, Part of the dilemma, I think, for BC, it is crazy. They haven't gotten good shots. They haven't moved the basketball properly. They have really struggled. They've had good coverage. They've forced deep shots. Uh, the ability to run out is something that I think Rutgers is a much better team when they create situations like this. Open floor, a little wire to wire. Take a look at our statistics for the first 20 minutes of action. Rutgers on a 15-2 run. Look at that. Coleman, 12 points. Did a lot of his damage during the middle portion of that 20 minutes. Rutgers shooting pretty good. Four turnovers before their first field goal attempt for the Eagles. And Bell, 1 of 10. 5 of 33. Ugly numbers. Can they rebound? Now you got to start early. Get some confidence. Here's that flex screen. Dorna Kemp gets the open look. And a rebound, Ryan Sidney. Oh, he shot that one short. He started the first half. Yep, sure, right. make some shots. Hey, he was in great position to do some damage. Sherrod and Coleman. Here's Coleman, a quick jack. No, up top. Hits the top, and Exani with another hustle play for Rutgers. I just see Rashad come with the handout. Stop. <laughs> Let me get inside. Okay. If he talks, you better listen. Indeed. Sherrod with the ball. Here's Shields. Shields, Sherrod, and Coleman in the backcourt. Kent 
And Exani up front, and Dornkamp got a piece of that. Get a better shot from Shields outside. Let's go, Exani keeps it alive. Good effort. And a foul on Dornkamp. So Nate picks up a foul. It'll be his second. Team first. And Rutgers on that early penetration had Kent wide open and didn't give him the basketball. A little slip pass by Coleman would have certainly helped him. Sandy's doing a real good job. Five boards all at the offensive end. He started the game right on that current shot. That's right. The follow. And they're in the right spot for Rutgers. That time of year, here's Kent. Up top to Shield. He lost it going up because Bell got a piece of it. Bell back the other way. Change of pace on Shield. Layup attempt, no. Off of Kent's hands with a BBC ball. He does glide, doesn't he, Troy Bell? Gets you a little relax and then explodes by. Good news about Rashad Kent, something you discussed when he finally picked up that first foul seven minutes in, he finished the first half with one foul. Sydney taken away by Exani. Bell got the carom and gets a layup. Seven points for Troy Bell. Well, they're a different team if Kent can stay on the floor, but if BC's going to get back in, it's this end. I think they got to accelerate the pace a little, create some havoc on Rutgers' offensive thrust. Remember last year in their championship run, that was one of their hallmarks. They got stops. Sherrod won't go. Rebound Sydney. Oh, an ankle. Oh, that's not good. Oh. Here's Ali Upatouch. Oh, from Ryan Sydney. And a timeout is Sherrod has a very funky follow through on his shot, and then he landed undoubtedly, probably came down on somebody's ankle. Uh, twisted his. It's horrible to see. Extended to a and then the running to the floor, and we've all had these, Dave. You know what kind of pain it is. Take a timeout and check on Mr. Shad when we come back right here at the Madison Square Garden. A matter of days before you're capable, unless there's some instant yep. healing maneuver over there, or it's not as bad as he first thought. But I, I, I think his action suggested is. Very critical for mm -hmm. them. As you mentioned, too, they're thin anyway. And that follow-through, reminiscent of two guys. Let's take you back. The one, Wally by Gally Jones. Right. Going over in the 76ers. And World Be Free had a crazy, you know, nice finish like that. Kent powers up, and Sydney can't stop him. Well, that's a nice entry, huh? From the top down to the bottom. Uh, we talked about a couple of old times. And, uh, unfortunately, I can remember. <laughs> no, that's good. But trust me, it's good that you can remember. How about this? He uses that strength, Rashad, begs for the ball, and he's very flexible, too. A lot of guys lock their guy and can't step to the ball. He's got some good speed and reaction. Interesting note here is Kent goes for the free throw. That was the third foul in Ryan Sidney. They can't afford, the BC cannot afford to lose him. Well, he was trying to cover there and help out. That's usually when you get some problems foul-wise. Thing about Rashad Kemp, well, I tell you what, he empties the tank every day. He does, and even with the free throws, I mean, he works at it. I mean, it's uh, the technique is not quite what a great shooter would be, but he concentrates and tries to do the right thing. It's three out of seven today. Nice show, look at the big guy, and then oh, recovers, huh? Tremendous dexterity. I think they get Rashad here on a small change. He can't believe it. Number two. And they get Ken. <laughs> Show a little personality with Bobby Delato. Second foul on Rashad. Well, he can get him quickly. That's the dilemma. That one shouldn't count. Team third on Rutgers. Sydney finds Agbot. Nice pump. They go right at Ken. Look at this kid. You're right. He does empty the tank. Quick release, and it goes for Ryan Sidney. Oh, he came down, he wouldn't have had it. You're a great reaction. Ten points for Ryan Sidney. 35-28. Rutgers in the lead. They've led by as many as 11. And Dornikamp doing a pretty good job on a guy that... Oh, there's it still, and then it's taken back by Wigan. Wigan got in trouble there. Shields finds Xana. And a little traveling violation. BC showing a little emotion right now. Uh, moving quicker, and here the ability to dump it low is a nice job with the 
pass inside. Sidney, one of those guys that beats you all over the floor. And by great presence. 14th turnover by Rutgers. Let's see if the emotion comes out here from BC. The coaching staff was concerned. I said, if they hear some an emotional play here by Kent. Oh. Leaves it. Coleman reverse. No. And Bell comes away. Oh, Kent is hurt now. Oh, jeez. Jordan Camp's going to get it out. And back to Bell and Kent getting it up. Going back up the floor. Sydney. And he gets down to Kent. Wow. What a development here, folks. And he reaches down. And the big guy showing his intestinal fortitude getting down the floor. There's no foul, Billy. There's no way he wants to come out there. He is hobbling here as he comes down. And just ends up in the wrong spot and that big body gets a tag and he ambles off the floor now and gets a blow that's how quickly he picks mm -hmm. him up though in a hurry number well, number three so kent picks up his third within a few seconds and then trying to keep his arms up but he got a piece of him with the body Kept alive. Ryan Sidney got his hands on a loose ball again. Kenny anything, Wall. Anything up for grabs. Sidney so aggressive. Well, the BC staff is looking for more emotion. They wanted to see the Eagles match what they did at Syracuse on Sunday, and it's starting to bubble to the surface here, ref. And right now, nice job by Bell. Used a screen, then got a screen, and a crossover. Bell inside, nice block by Coleman. Out of bounds. 16.02 to go. Let's send it over to Dave Ryan. All right, David Bill, as you can see, big injury troubles for Rutgers. Sophomore Mike Sherrod was taken back to the locker room by the trainer, Eric Brindenbaugh. He has a badly sprained left ankle. They're not sure if he's going to come back. Now, Rashad Kent is out with a turned ankle, and no one can attend to Kent because the trainer is back with the other guard, Mike Sherrod, right now. Not a good situation, Ryan. Right? Oh, thank you very much. Walls with two on the shot. Clark Dorothy has kept it alive, but a foul. He's got to keep it right here. They got Lamazana for the foul, his second. Team third. That's an interesting comment by Dave Ryan. Kent's over there just rubbing his leg and ambling around. <laughs> they need an assistant trainer. Get a doctor. There's got to be one in the house. <laughs> and here's John Linehan, defensive player of the year for the PC Friars. Making his way into the garden. What's this? Mike Sweeney carrying a water bucket? And look at the coach not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to straighten that the lump out. <laughs> the Conagra Foods Big East Championship. We've got Providence Georgetown later on tonight. Mike Tarico and Len Elmore will be here. Villanova and Syracuse, Seton Hall and St. John's. And Pittsburgh, Miami, Connecticut, Notre Dame. If either one of those teams are going to get it done, they only have to win three games as opposed to four. And Rashad Kent. Let's see. He, he's talking to Gary Waters, trying to see what's happening with his ankle. The Rutgers lead down to five. A little surge here, and Kent's going to come back in. He talked him right into it. And it's nice rapport between the star and his coach. Walls over the partially block, and Lamazana and a foul on Kenny Walls. Well, when you're coming back, yeah, that's one of those. Right. Yeah, they challenge on the shot, and how about this? They must have somebody into holistic medicine. I was going to say, uh, trucked in some uh, miracle, miracle cure water, huh? Kent's got to be careful. Picked up his third foul at the 16-28 mark. I like the personality of BC right now. I mean, they're responding, they're taking the challenge. Not a good decision last trip, but much more aggressive on the D-Day. BC, the defending tournament champions. Down low to Kent, playing with three fouls. Got to be careful. Pump fake. Got the shot off and a foul on Dorkin. Yeah, he wants it too. Sure does. He wants to finish with a flourish. Good footwork, the speed, uh, disdaining the double. Here, everybody looking to double and help out. And occasionally triple. But how about that step through? And he loves to take the hit. Hit three of seven at the free throw line today. Mm. Well, you hate to see a guy struggle, especially a guy who does so much for, for the ball club as Andrew Bryant comes back in for BC. Imagine if he could make free throws. You know, Larry Dolby told me a story. He said he likes to get hit. He asked Jimmy Brown once. They shared lockers in Cleveland. So what do you like most about football? He said, I like to get hit. 
you know, it's a different. He wants to see how yeah. hard you can hit him. Yeah, and don't forget, Jim Brown didn't wear hip pads either. Yeah, That's how just, much he liked it. He got up slowly and it just ran over you again. Yeah, exactly. He got to shoot free throws, though. That's right. Although I heard he was a great basketball player at Manhasset, Allen, the Island. You guys got good work down in the low box. I think they need some inside pa uh, baskets and passes. The Rutgers had an 11-point lead at one point. Went to the uh, break, 33-22. BC right back in it. Bryant did a real good job on Kent there, fronting. Fresh body, too. Wiggy got creamed. And then delayed call, but Teddy Valentine's not the same thing I did. Agbai picks up the foul. That'll be his second and team fourth. Boy, Al's team shooting a lot better here. <laughs> well, they're in the hunt a little, huh? Yeah, right. In the first half, my goodness. A real struggle. A little clear on the right. Good job by Bell containing. Jerome Coleman. Coleman has scored here in the second half. They turn it over. He has not scored second half. Another turnover. Those turnovers hurt me, Dave. Oh, yeah. I mean, from the top to the bottom of the denial. For the tie. Bingo! And right back to make you pay for it. Turnovers. Puts you in the grave. Just like all oh, those bases on balls and yeah. baseball and turnovers, the same thing. Now, they're going to happen, but it's what you attempt to do to correct them. See if Coleman tries to get him going again. Good, good job by Bell. Sitting on the left hand. Change of pace. Oh, shot. Oh, a little kiss. Wow. That's um, the backyard. That's for its age. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Bell just relaxed a little. And they went home with Jerome. 14. I like your hockey ball the other day. There's walls over the top. Again. Kenny Wall. He's got back-to-back -back threes. 38-37, Boston College. Coleman. Not the way. BC breakout. Numbers. Sydney. Leaves for Bell. What by Ramazana. Bell got it back. Foul, Ramazana. Eight score the goal. Stick it with it. Ramazana did the right thing. Rutgers just could not clean it up. Can you feel the aggressiveness oh, right now, BC? Taking the challenge, taking the bit. Good counter punching here. Avoiding the charge was the difficult aspect of that particular play. A, a nice slide by and number two in your program, but probably number one in their hearts. Troy Bell, huh? Gets to the line. Bell trying to get into double figures. What a tough scoring night for the scoring champion. Still stuck on nine points. Okay, no lead is sacred anymore. Not at all. Not at all. I'm just not getting a blow right now. It's not necessarily the three point shot either. It's just how the teams can explode. Dabney had it knocked out of his hand. BC right now enjoying its biggest lead. All of three points. And let's check in with Dave Ryan again. Well, Dave, the good news is that both Rashad Ken and Mike Sherrod have returned to the Rutgers lineup. Now, we told you that Rashad Kent couldn't get the attention he needed medically because the trainer, Eric Brindabaugh, was back out with Mike Sherrod in the locker room attending to his sprained ankle. Turns out the team doctor, Bob Monaco, is only a couple rows back right behind the Rutgers bench. And during that last time out, Rashad Kent got the proper attention. They're both healthy and ready to go. Nice to see the doc answer the call, Dave. High-level program. They have plenty of medical attention. A deep check. Kept alive by Bryant to examine. Oh, Sherrod back, gives it to Coleman. Tough shot, he got the foul on Watson. Give it a little earlier, you got yourself a deuce. Uh, Watson with pretty good recovery with the reach in. So both clubs now looking to take advantage of open court opportunities in here, as we know that Watson uh, just doing all he could to stop it, but give it up early, you got an easy clean one. What a year for Jerome Coleman as he back rims the first one. 10th in scoring, 13th three three-point percentage. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, catch ESPN's first original motion picture. It stars Brian Dennehy, follow Bobby Knight, the controversial college basketball coach, and the Indiana Hoosiers through a season on the break. Parental discretion is advised. Two-point BC lead. 
Rutgers led 33-22 at the half. And there's that 2-3 zone that did create a lot of problems early in the first half for BC. They used the clock a little more, can't hit you as quickly. Got to be patient. Working around the perimeter. 14 on the shot clock. Troy Bell stuck on nine points. Ryan Sidney's got 12. That won't go. Rebound Dabney. Rutgers on the move. Sherrod, terrific recovery. Moving very well. It's amazing, isn't it? Bell, he couldn't ask for a better look than he got yeah. in the baseline. Well, it's the guard. It's the Big East tournament. If he could, if he could walk, he's coming right. out there, Sherrod. And they don't want to wrap it up here. Sherrod trying to turn the corner. Fouled by Bell. Maybe be his third. Might be three, yeah. And he does a nice job of containing, but he just relaxes a little bit. That's what got him the foul. Initial contain, then he stands up. And then the blow by, he ends up not, uh, knocking the guy. 17 foul, one one in effect. So Sherrard with the chance to tie the ball game here. Terrific recovery, unorthodox jumper, athletic, good penetrated. Missed that. Agbox. And nice job by Xana. Here's Coleman. Three ball. No, a little long. And rebound Watson. Numbers against him. Main attacks anyway. And he did that in the Syracuse game on Sunday, where BC was up 11. He went one on three. Syracuse countered and got something out of it, and it was about a five or six point turnaround, and that was a costly play for Watson. Well, Dave, they scout. They know he's going to try and take it all the way. He's got to use better judgment. Get a good look. Welcome back to New York City, everybody, and later on tonight, ESPN2 has the championship week. Presented by 7-Up Doubleheader, 7.30 Eastern Time, Quinnipiac. Visit Central Connecticut as the Northeast Conference crowns its champion. Then at 9.30, Conference USA Tournament begins with first-round action. Tulane taking on St. Louis. That coming to you from the First Star Center in Cincinnati. <laughs> 40 to 38, Boston College over Rutgers. Right now, 18 fouls for BC, four for Rutgers. There's your second half field goals. And as you noted, much more impressive. Yes, indeed. For BC after a real problem first half. And BC shot five for 33 in the first half. Sherrod, they let him play. Here's Ryan Sidney. Nice play off the timeout. Sherrod just couldn't fit another good look here. Stolen by Lamazana. He's got three on two, gives it to Coleman. Hard to the glass, and he got fouled by Bryant. Nice use of the body as well, and a good give up in the open floor. Okay, right now, uh, some judgments have to prevail. Either way, if you're going to win it, uh, you go down one way. Look at this now. You don't read ahead. Amazon is just with a great understanding of where to be. Gives it up early, and I love the little dip under to get to the free throw line. Uh, he understands some offense. Well. Oh, Junior College All-American at Cecil County Community College in Maryland. Dabney's out. Kent is back in. Honorable mention, all Big East performer. A lot of folks were surprised he didn't make second or third team. He had some explosive moves, didn't he? Unbelievable. 17 points for Coleman, 8 of 9 shooting. Boston College with Bell, Sidney, Walls, Bryant, and Agby. Sherrod, Coleman, Lamazana, Exani, and Kent for Rutgers right now. Kent playing with three fouls. And Bryant trying to screen, pop, and see if he can get a good look. Ball swings it to Bell. Puts a move on Lamazana. The long arms there. He's able to get the shot off. Loose ball to Ryan Sidney. Missed it. Bell inside. They let him battle, and now, let's see, what do we got, a foul? Yeah, Bell gets to the free throw line again. I mean, these guards really do a great job rebounding. Sydney gets seven. Just getting after it. Sydney, as I mentioned, gets seven. Troy Bell gets four. So Sherrod picked up the foul. That'll be his third. Kent, Sherrod, they have three fouls along with Wigan. 
on the Rutgers Ball Club. As Bell misses that first. And here's a look at the first team all biggies performance. That would have been tough to leave anybody off, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. I like the decision. Plenty of size up front. Wink players. And uh, Brandon Knight with just a absolutely flawless year running the help for Pitt. Knight and Butler were co-players of the year. Good choice as well. Bell now with 11 points, 3 of 17 from the field. So much for the theory about mom and dad being in the house and he puts up big numbers. The exception to the rule. Yeah. And Kent really loads up big. Very strong on the reverse. It didn't go. Ooh, and he needs it. With his difficulty on the free throw line. You know, they root awfully hard on the Rutgers bench for his layups to go in. <laughs> you notice they have to yeah. band and the fans are uh, on their feet as well. He just really got himself too far under as he used the rim. And uh, the reaction all over, whether the bench or the floor, stick it in there, Rashad. This for the tie. And that did not look good at launch. You know what looks good? Uh, Gary Waters uh, probably making some suggestions here. The beginning and the follow-through look great. Mm -hmm. It's the trip in between that you get stuck on the LIE. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. A wide left. That's why, now you know if you're just joining us, why they wanted that layup attempt so badly. Coming up on the 10 minute mark, they go down low to Agbach. Kent playing with three fouls. Swing it to Bell. He does have quick feet, doesn't he? Sure he does. Of well, the leading scorer in Big East Conference overall play. He'll shoot a three. Too strong. Agbach kept it alive. Bell's got it. Lost it to Coleman. Terrific in fighting, huh? And oh, we got a, a player down on the floor, too. And picked off by Walls. And it's Bryant. Looked like he got knocked out. They're going to call timeout. They got a nice judgment by the officials. Yeah, I think it was. Well, he must have taken a blow around the head. Yeah, I, I, going after it, he just banged innocently, I believe. Saw him recoil. Steve Beisel, Michelle rather, giving uh, attention to Andrew Bryant, the sophomore out of Denison, Texas. I'll tell you what, the uh, medical profession is going to be busy all week. The way this thing is starting. Oh, yeah. If this is any indication, folks. <laughs> well, you got to start wearing the helmets and the shoulder pads on the left side. Let's see. And right here. As usual, yeah, there yeah, was the Kent got him left to left hand. hand, yeah. I saw the recoil at the end. He'll be back to shoot some threes. <laughs> <laughs> Just cleared ahead. Of course, Al uh, played with the Nets at one time, Al Skinner. Good defender. Mm -hmm. Great job at Rhodey, and when he took over PC, it was a struggle, but he righted the ship. Yes, he did. Uh, Tough right? loss last year to Southern Cal. Out in Long Island at Nassau Coliseum in the uh, second round of the NCAA, NCAA tournament said goodbye to BC last season, but it was a great surprise the heck out of everybody. They were picked down or at the bottom of the Big East Conference last season. It sounds like Pitt almost, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Resurgence this year. Six, uh, Pittsburgh uh, rode away. Oh. Uh, Ryan Sidney creating again. 43-40. Boston College. Sydney's got 14. Nice job keeping the dribble alive. That'll like the recovery by Sherrod here at the eight. This is the box set. Sherrod, as you noted, uh, still on the floor. Now Coleman gets a walk. Once you go down. Yep. And they ran, ran that double screen for him, and he had a clear out. We've seen that play before, but this is a great job of the footstep and also righting yourself just enough for the release. A little nylon in play. Here's BC with the ball after the 18th turnover by Rutgers. Shields is going to come in for Rutgers at the next stoppage. Okay. Kick ball by Coleman. And they fought for Boston College. So Coleman limping off just a little bit as well. Yeah, I see. A little, everybody's getting a neck and uh, they wave for some assistance. So they've had three ankles here in the second half. So I played the year that you frequently didn't have a trainer. <laughs> but 
Yeah, spit on have ice. You have right. ice. Spit on it, rub it, That's get right. back in there. You want to play, uh, just tighten that lace. Sydney sets up Bell. 15 on the shot clock. Back in the corner, knocked away by Xander. And Jordan didn't screen the guy. That's how Xander got himself involved. Shot clock. Now inside 10 seconds. But at five, could end up with a deep check. There it is. Over Lamazana. Front rim, rebound. Give him a breakout. Here's Hervé. Lamazana with his first field goal. It's 43-42 Boston College. And Dave, I don't know if you'll agree with me. He should become a terrific player. Oh, Herbie, yeah. I don't mean the dunk. Yeah, that's all part of it with the kids today. But he really is athletic, and he gets caught on the high he side. Sure did. Mm -hmm. A little mugging of Yuka Agbai. Now that's experience prevailing there. That's right. You know, he's but, had a turn of guy. You're right about Lamazana. I saw his uh, an explosive game he had back in early January at home against Georgetown. Hit multiple threes, was active, played defense, blocked shots. It was outstanding. We'll take a break here. Irving Lamazana just showing some of his skills as Rutgers trailing by a point here in first round action. For Rutgers and check in with Dave Ryan with a coach is very interested in watching this game and getting ready for the next one, Rhino. That's right, Dave. Timmy Wells, the head coach of Providence. Georgetown next for you. We know about your great defensive player of the year in the Big East and John Linehan, the all-time steals leader in NCAA history. Preview the matchup with Kevin Braswell. How disruptive can Linehan be tonight? Well, we got to worry about Braswell as well. I mean, he's, I think, fifth all-time in steals, so it's a great matchup. They've gone head-to-head -head for the last four years, and uh, two little guys who really love to play the game the right way defensively. They love to pass the ball first. They're great leaders on the court, so he's a tough matchup for us, but we've, they've got other answers as well. Team, your team is right now 15-15. and 15. You really want to get the win, at least for an NIT bid. Uh, you said to me a minute ago, your team playing well. First 15 minutes or so of the second half, but the last five, they can't get over the hump. What's been the difference? If we could uh, change the rules to 35-minute games, I think our, we'd be in the NCAA tournament, but we haven't been able to close out games. We don't have that really go-to guy. We've got so many young kids, 10 freshmen and sophomores, but we're learning uh, by committee out there, and uh, each game is more, we get gain more experience, so today, hopefully, we can get over the hump. Right, good luck tonight. We'll see you soon. All right, Dave Sims lost to Syracuse first round last year and to Penn State first round of the NCAA as a year ago as well. Dave, thank you very much. Tim Welsh, welcome for that first Big East Conference, uh, Big East Tournament win in his tenure at Providence. Uh, pretty relaxed, too, wouldn't you, Ed? Mm-hmm. Very relaxed. Fourth foul on Dornican. Give him another half hour. Swing of it. Out right. under right. right. the collar. Well, we've had, for the half, we've had three ties and one lead change. For the game, four ties and seven lead changes is Bryant. Nice to see he made the speedy recovery. And the mortal words of our friend Rich Beard, he can take a punch. He sure can. <laughs> he did. He was level. Getting off the deck. That's how I learned to count to ten, by the way. <laughs> No standing eight count in your day. <laughs> Turn and kick. Kenny Wall steps into that one. Oh. short. Sydney kept it alive. Look at that. Agba. Oh, he missed the chip. He went at the basket. Got to convert. He's a little bit puffy coming down. 43 all. Kent can wear on you, too. Oh, no question about it. Look at the battle in their tongue war in there with Bryant. And he had Agba always around. Zanny with a step through, lefty no. Up ahead, Ryan Sidney, man to beat, steps in. Good run out by Agby. Wow. Anticipation, that's a great block. Oh, what a reaction. Zanny, like another guy going down. I don't know whether he hit the floor, and they need some help. I'm hoping he's taking the Walt Frazier blow there. Taking it. Yeah, the 20, <laughs> right? The quick 20. But he came down pretty hard. Take a look in here. Wow. They up top, it looked awfully. There's always going to be some body on the block. You bet. That was not a good landing. You know, Clyde was the guy that I believe originated the 20. He would rest on his Absolutely. knees, you know, put his arms out. Let's hope there's nothing serious here. Eric Bradenbach getting all kinds of 
FaceTime this afternoon. Goes up hard. Let's see. Comes down. Ooh, geez, that hard fall yeah. right there. Might have gotten some shoulder, some hip. Uh, you're right. I think more hip to Lane Sampling. Yeah. Tell you, I, he just has played extremely well, Dave. You mentioned out in the first half how he was always in the right spot, whether it was a tip to a teammate, a finish. The man of the gate strong. And Eric B is very, very busy today. Kent has had a problem. He had a knee problem for Coleman, an ankle for Sherrod, and now it's like a hip for Xanik. Rutgers had a 33-22 lead at the half. BC has come back and made it a ball game here. 6.43 to go. Boston College, the defending champions here in the Big East Tournament. BC 4-5 and five over their last nine games. Rutgers comes in having lost two straight and three of four. Pretty subdued there on the sideline. Lots of the 68% free throw shooter. And why not? BC... Back in front again, 44-43. Coleman's back in. Jason McCoy is out in the Rutgers lineup. Al Skinner, one of the real gentlemen in the, the college game. Quiet intensity. He lets them play. I mean, he does all the work. Free game. Gives him that free reign. Rutgers probably needs to get Coleman going a little bit. Shields. He's bailed out by Kent. Okay, his feet were on the half court line. The heels. Mm -hmm. There's that tough thing. You and Kent got it back though. Kent goes hard, left hand, and he scores. Great selection, Dave. Rashad Kent puts Rutgers back on top by one. He's got nine. Well, that point to baseline pass so hard. And take it away from Ryan Sidney. We haven't heard from Coleman in a while. Coleman's got 17. Rod's ankles are fine now. Gets a pick from Dabney. Down low. Stolen. Same play. Sure okay. was. Different it's guy, but same idea. Sydney takes it right at the defense. Partially blocked. They keep it alive. Agba, Agba but a foul on the play. That's but the right call, too, Dave. Agba over the top. Good defensive position. He's so, Yuka. That's his turn. Third foul. Queens Village native right here in Queens, New York. BC's 10th foul, seven on Rutgers. The, the, the angle of the passes, I mean, they're trying to throw them right down on the street. It's impossible. Right. You've got to go to the foul line extended and then dump it in. And the guys like Kent is such a great presence and target that it seems like it's easy to get it to him. Janney's back in. Good sign for Rutgers. Shields with eight points. First trip to the line. And Rutgers by three. Five and a half to go. First game of the Conagra Foods Big East Tournament. Bell has had a miserable shooting day. Bell with 11 points. And none of them easy either, Dave. They've really responded. Good use of the bounce here. Tough shot again. Out of 19. On a pass, though. He's not afraid to take him. He's holding on by one. Sherrod back to Coleman. Got a taller man on him. Gets a pick from McJanney. And now they switch back. You see Wall's going to have to come out. He does. Shield sets up McJanney. John McJanney knocking down a jumper. You know, Dave, he walked behind the bench, behind the bench. He didn't want to sit down to tighten that hip. A great delivery. Three-point lead for Rutgers. Approaching four and a half to go. First meeting this season between these two clubs. Rainmaker by Bryant. Tip by Walls back to Bell. Sydney for three. Break it up. Nice kick by Bell. 49 all. The score is tied. Pretty much as expected when you think yes, of this indeed. league this year. Here's six. Oh, boy, look at that. BC, 25. They've had a poor shooting night today. Dumped and chased, if you will. 
done everything they could to claw themselves back in. That was a good job getting a, a good look inside. And Zanny going for his second straight. Bryant gets a loose ball. Ryan Sidney back the other way. Gives it to Bell. Three at the walls. They got to act by against Kent. And some foul trouble. Nice get back. And I believe this is on Kent. That's a terrific reset. Went to him once, and that might made the correct decision. Kick it back out, duck in a little bit, get a better spot. Fourth foul on Rashad. So that foul coming with 3.32 to go. Well, French time action here, folks, 49 all. Kent with his fourth person. Puts Yuka Agbaye on the line. Luka, some solid numbers this year. 11.6 boards. Finished, with, finished 14th in block shots. And they bring in big Kareem Wright along with Lamazana in the game. Uh, at this point, almost a little offense defense, too, yeah, right? You bet. Uh, it can't the blow, so it doesn't. Agby. It's the half century mark for Boston College. 332 to go. Agby with eight points. Al Skinner's defending champions at Boston College here in the big city of New York. And what a first round game we have. BC leading by one. John, thank you very much. Steve Lapis with a big win. And talking about the tournament, Boston College, here's how they stack up, ref. That's a couple of tough losses. Or Teams that you were surprised at, huh? Mm hmm And these here, very impressive, but I think they need to need this one, no question. That does not hurt them at all. That does not hurt them at all. They got to get this one, no yep, question. They do. Last 11 minutes, both teams' biggest lead has been three points. Right now, BC by one. A little pressure. Full court. Janney gets it back to Sherrod. Ramazana. The baseline runner. No! Good look, though. And they battle, and Ryan Sidney once again comes up with the loose carom. He is amazing. Pioneer and Arbor. Just amazing. Pick it up where he left off Sunday at Syracuse. Agby wants it down low. They have not been able to go opposite with that dump to the box, and that's been open and available. Under three to play. Austin College, tournament defending champions. They have really been pushed. Sydney dumps it to Agby. And a foul on the play. And once again, standing outside was Bryant on a kick out from the lane. Had a great opportunity. But they get to the foul line, so it's a very successful trip. Kareem Wright with the foul. Ninth team foul on Rutgers. See what I mean right there, David? Yeah. Well, look right, uh, but fortunate enough to get Agby on the free throw line. He's got to convert two, though. He's been doing the one for Can't get it today. Agby struggling at the line. Kareem Wright's going to take a seat. Agby, four out of seven. Free throw line. There's your numbers for both clubs. Rutgers has had plenty of opportunity. They sure have seven attempts. Two point BC lead. Pressure again. And BC's done a good job not giving the open jumpers to any of the perimeter people. Nice pass. Hit with the catch. And no! They're going to say the push was before the shot. Gary Waters begging over there. And you can't blame him. Because of the difficulty on the free throw line, he wants a continuation. Look at the derriere here as he turns away from traffic. Seals. Tell you what, pretty close to it. Yes. Legal. Yes. Continuation. Four on Agby. Get out the side. Reach back. That time, overcompensated. A lot of his shots have been going left. That time, it went right. You know, agonizing moments on that uh, on that Rutgers bench as Buka picks up his fourth foul. Are you suggesting the wind currents? No, sir. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, sure. Come on, big fella. Uh, ooh, air ball. Ooh. That is so tough. 235. He's three for 13 today. And those are the things. Should Rutgers not come away with the W here today? They'll be thinking about that for, from now to next uh, October 15th. That, that, that nobody plays harder either or does more for his team than this guy. 
Troy Bell. He's not had a good shooting day, to say the least. And the zone is really taking him out of getting a ton of looks, or good looks. Sydney with the catch. Back to Bell. Sydney, quick three. In and out. And went back again. A little bada bing on that one. Boy, that opens it up to a five point lead. 20 points. 12 here in the second half for Ryan Sydney. That's a, I would foul Kent on the catch. Oh, no question. No question. Over the top, Lamazana. No. Bell rebound. A buck 50 to go. Starting to look pretty good here for Boston College. They're going to play some clock. Now, this is when Bell and Sydney can be very tough. In control, coming down the stretch. They go to Sydney. And Sydney, the only guy that struggles on their free throw line. Get it back up top to Bell. 16 shot clock, buck and a half game clock. Bell, three. Won't get it. Rebound, Agby. That's a huge Sorry. rebound for the Eagles. And he goes right to Troy Bell. Heads up play. 120 to go. 26 offensive boards for Boston College. The Eagles average 14 offensive boards a game, so they are plus 12 in that. Very high. impressive. Look at those numbers. Woo! And that's enough to put you in the hole they're in right now. You gotta have guards though that make good decisions. Even though Bell is struggling, controlling the tempo, getting the ball moved against this 2-3 zone, integral part of their offensive philosophy. Here's his day. 13 points. Make it 14. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Yeah, Dave and Bill, you guys were talking about the significance of the BC backcourt. Ryan Sidney told me before the game, the reason this team either struggles or excels, plain and simple, he and Troy Bell have to perform well. He knows his teammates look for everything from points to leadership to energy from the backcourt. What a great second half Sidney has had. Bell hasn't shot well. You saw Agby getting the ball late. He is their leader, no question about it. In and out, and thanks, Dave. Here comes Rutgers. they got to get some shots up. Trailing by six, they call a timeout. Hardly over with... 74 ticks remaining, but they got some work to do. Don't forget, coming up, here from Madison Square Garden in New York City, Big East Championship, as we look ahead, the Providence Friars, the Georgetown Hoyas. Getting our day started, Providence and Georgetown immediately following this one. And later on tonight, Villanova, Syracuse, Seton Hall, and St. John's. Look at those matchups for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah, think about it, no matter who wins. That's right. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, you got Pittsburgh in the first game tomorrow, and then the second uh, winner of the second game, they only have Miami. You got a blanket? Put Whoa. it over the field. Honest to goodness. Here's our situation. Everybody in a double bonus, the timeouts. Plenty of if press for BC to, if they're pressured to get organized. Gary Waters' offense needs to get going. They haven't scored in the last 330 plus. It's a vacant trips to the foul line. Coleman, no. Oh, what's that by Kent? They're cleaning up. Yeah, they're out and Rutgers with 101 to go. Now, this is where, at Rutgers, they're extremely dangerous. They get the press set up, and the place gets rocking, but they now have to try and force a violation on inbounding or try and gamble on a entry pass, get the rotation in the foul line area, see if they can come up with one. If not, I think you start extending the game. Give one. That's right. Rutgers with a full timeout, ditto BC. BC has 330s remaining as we check out the Rutgers tournament resume. 18 and 11, way more than anybody would have expected. Gary Waters coming in, new coach program. They were picked last in the West Division of the Big East. How about some of those wins, too? Yeah. All at home. Uh, it, it's uh, You'll take it, though, right? Oh, absolutely. No, I'm not denigrating. I know. Uh, that's part of the progression, I think. They're learning how to win right. as they go away, and that's what his next step is if you chat with him. Sydney looking for help. Gets it to Walls. Good There's a steal. Coleman, no. He couldn't get it. 
Bell got a man ahead of the pack. Bryant, he'll back it out. They foul him with 53-2 to go. And that's what's good about having a Troy Bell. I mean, a lot of guys would have tried to make that pass. It could have been fumbled, could have missed. And you're making a decision for the big guy. He wisely, fan dribble, got control. And that's one of those that Coleman feeling his neck. I mean, he had to steal the perfect rotation. Troy Bell on the line, two shots. Troy Bell, a great free throw shooter. As we mentioned, second in the conference to Gary Buchanan of Villanova. Makes the first. Seven out of ten, and here's a look at that still, Bill. And they've a great job. Here's the rotating man. Comes from the foul line, and that's where he got hurt. Uh, Coleman with a great anticipation. Fans reacting to the replay here on the big board. And Mike Molinari starting problems here at the big board. <laughs> So Bell pushes it to a 57-51 lead. They got to get some shots up here right here real quick. Quick hitters. They got Walls guarding Coleman. I think the play was not run the way Coleman wanted it. He was looking for somebody to set a pick for him. And he gets bailed out. Yeah, exactly. Right? Stopping the clock. And that's one of those you got to make quick decisions. A lot of guys go for three. Get the two. Sure. Get the foul. Bing. As quickly as you can. Now we get the clock stop. Two shots coming up for Mike Sherrod. Buck is really exhibiting a lot of toughness. I'm not saying this is over, but just mentally. They had a great first half, and I think part of the difficulty is on the free throw line. And, and the injuries, too, at the rear pack. They get set now. That's what they got to do. So they get the two from Sherrod. Four point game. 40. 3-3 three, three to go. Okay, now you got with four points. Perfect trap. Now you got to step up. Still got it. Bell trying to weave his way through. Finds the open man. Wide open is Bryant. Oh. That might be the exclamation point right there. How about the courage of Walls to defuse with that look? 59-53. 30 seconds ago. Good D on Coleman. Long range. No good. Rebound, Sydney. Outlet walls. He's got Agby if he needs him. Kenny takes it all away. Got fouled with 20.6 seconds to go. I think the wall's almost saying, I gave one up the last trip. I'm going myself. <laughs> but going over the top, something you have to do in presses. If you go over the top, you can make decisions like this. And Kent was the fifth man in the setup defensively. He gambled out deep and certainly paid for it as Brian, who's been shooting threes beautifully, gets ascended in. Walls can get some more separation here for BC. That one won't go. A lot of poise on that sideline, I thought, when they weren't playing well. Well, just very relaxed, trusting of his backcourt, and why not? Walls is 75% shooter. Leaves the door slightly open. Shields takes it all away. Give him a layup. 14-7 to go. Timeout Rutgers. And the steal away. They're a steal away right now. Rutgers the Warriors doing a great job extending this game. Second timeout for Rutgers. Pretty much what we expected. All kinds of ups and downs, crazy things happening in tournament play. Dave Simpson, Bill Raftery with you. It was a 33-22 lead for Rutgers at the half, but a good job, a lot of poise, and the emotion came back to D.C. in the second and half. They really got after it. I, I, I would think that at halftime they said, let's show our personality on the defensive end, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So they got after it. And now this press, what do you think? They've done a good job, and the coaching staff, they put a lot on energy and enthusiasm. Dave Ryan talked about that. And it's really come to the fore here in the second half. BC in the first half, don't forget, they shot 15% from the field at 5 for 33. All They've right. done a much better job here in the second half. Rutgers making its first appearance in the Big East. Big East tournament in two years. In terms of the NCAA tournament, the most ever. That was a heck of a year, sure, getting sure seven was. in. What do you think this year? You figure those four teams that got the uh, bye. I, 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 you know, unless somebody really rocks and rolls, I'm saying five. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody might do a job here and shock. 
Uh, the major domos in this league, but right now Rutgers has got to anticipate, gamble, and I think play one safety. Uh, don't gamble in the backcourt area. Go for a trap and then give it up. Agby. And he's quickly fouled by Exani. It's probably a good guy to foul. Yuka has struggled today at the line. And Sydney too, you know, they could have grabbed yep. one there, right? Yuka five out of eight. 12.2 seconds ago with four points the margin for BC. Coming up after this game, Providence and Georgetown. See what Agby can do here. He can get into double figures. Well, he's in trouble on the front end all the time, right? And now all of a sudden, uh, the speed dribble and the containment of BC. So the push, again, two point. If he misses this, don't go for the old goose, I think. 60 to 55. Sherrod looking go. for Coleman. They deed him and Bell with a fine play. They've not been able to get the ball to Coleman here in, in some situations where they need that long range ball. They've played the perimeter great. Walls has been out there on him and Bell there with great containment on the bounce. Look for the lob. Exani gets it to Coleman for three. That should be it. Yep, that'll do it. Let's see, with 2 8 to go. And Sherrod could not save it. So the defending tournament champion, Boston College Eagles, they're going to survive. And they come away with their fourth straight Big East tournament win. 60 to 55, Boston College. We have our first winner in ConAgra Foods Big East Championships. Boston College advances to take on the number one seed out of the West, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Don't forget Providence and Georgetown is coming up in a few minutes later on tonight. Villanova and Syracuse, Seton Hall and St. John's. Boston College, first time they played Pittsburgh, they were 77-74 losers. And right now, let's check in with Dave Ryan. Standing by with Ryan Sidney. All right, David Bill, thanks. So you guys are down. Big deficit at the break, and Troy Bell was not shooting well. He averages more than 22 a game, but was not effective in the first half. Ryan Sidney, the you difference bet. in the second half, what was it? Uh, the difference was I went and talked to my sister, and she told me, like, there's, there's openings on the court, and you're just not finding them. You're not seeing everybody on the court. you got to keep your head up. After that, the coaches said, that was the worst basketball they had ever seen us play and that we didn't play good basketball on either end of the court. And we just felt like that was that was letting them down and letting each other down, you know. And this is our, this is some people's last year out here, you know what I'm saying? You got to play hard for everybody who's playing with you. You told me before the game, you and Troy in the backcourt have to take over. In the first half, it wasn't really the case. How did you do that in the second half? What did Rutgers do well against in the first half they did in the second? Well, in the first half, they out-rebounded us by a ton. They killed us on the rebounds, and I think that was the biggest deficit for us. And then the second half, we just had to come out, had to box out and get on the boards, and I think we did a, a good job at that. And they just a good basketball team. You can't give, you can't give them number of respect. Next up, the defending champs for you. You got Pittsburgh in a rematch of the biggest championship last year. They beat you on your home floor January 5th in Chestnut Hill. How important a game is that for you? It's just a big game, you know what I'm saying? We're at 20 right now, you know? And I just feel like you got to come out and you got to play well. It, it doesn't matter who we play. We just got to play well and play as a team. Good luck, Ryan. Thanks. ESPN2 tomorrow, 12 noon, Dave. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Rutgers put up a good fight, but they lose 60-55 to to the Boston College Eagles. Coming up next, Championship Week update presented by 7-Up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join John Saunders, Digger Phelps, and Dick Vitale in our ESPN studios, and we'll see you for our next game in a few minutes. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. So pencil Rutgers in for the NIT right now. There's no way they're making the NCAA tournament. For Boston College, they just take advantage of a team of Rutgers who can't make free throws. They were horrendous at the line. That's what killed them in the second half. But obviously, when you look at what Seton Hall, or I mean, what Boston College brings to the table, that win, I thought, Sunday at Syracuse gave them a lot of confidence coming to this game. They know they got to play through to get to the tournament. A matchup now between Brandon Knight and Troy Bell, that's going to be an interesting matchup when you look at
down the road to see how this falls in place. Well, it's a big game. There's no question for Boston College. It's a game that will determine whether or not they still are alive. I think if they beat Pittsburgh, I think they got a great shot with their resume of getting in a tournament. And that'll be a little payback because Pittsburgh came in and broke their big winning streak at home. Brandon Knight's been sensational. So has Paige for Pittsburgh. One of the great stories as we look here at the resume. And the story that's not on this is that they played Pitt once this year and lost 77-74. to But again, this is a Boston College team that's as Jekyll and Hyde as you've seen. Well, when Wall, Sidney, and of course Troy Bell play offensively, this is a different team. And when they don't, that's when they get in trouble. I think the key's going to be how they play in the boards against Pitt. That's interesting because Pitt is really strong inside. They really got some great jumpers, some great, great athletes, and Ben Holland's done a phenomenal job, no question, at Pittsburgh. The bottom line, though, you looked in the first half, Sidney and Bell were 3 for 17. You're not beating anybody, man, 3 for 17. Second half, they made some adjustments, came out, played better, and they won. They go as their backcourt goes. If that backcourt plays well, they got a chance. The question is, how many teams from the Big East will make it Six. into that field? Six. Six is Big Six. Five now. Bill Rafferty said five. We'll hear from Digger and more. St. John's, you know that they're trying to fight their way in. Would have had their 20th victory if they